All right, good evening. Hope everyone's doing good, and I want to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we're going to take a few moments and just mention a couple quick things, and then we're going to move on. Uh, don't forget this Saturday. This Saturday is our drive uh, through um, trunk or treat time. We're calling it a Fall Festival of Hope. It's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. right here at Northside, and uh, we're real excited about it. If you haven't brought candy, we need it no later than tomorrow. Um, and uh, we're going to take care of things. We're just expecting a great crowd. Pelicans will be here. A number of businesses in town have helped sponsor. We've got, uh, I believe, 13 cars are going to be participating in our trunk or treat. We've got a photography booth that's going to take place. We're going to pray over every group that comes through. We're excited. This is going to be a great time. And so don't miss Saturday, October 31st from 10 to 1. It's going to be great. Then this coming Sunday, is our last day that we're going to collect prisoner packets. Uh, cost you somewhere between eight and ten dollars. If you're not sure about all the details on that, call Miss Stephanie Weeks and she can get you plugged in. And uh, all I want to say is, you remember Ernest. Ernest had a change in his life, and and that's all I need to say. I mean, it's, it's just a great thing. Um, also, Sunday morning, the um, November first, we're going to be meeting live, uh, nine thirty and eleven fifteen. But we also want you to remember that it's time to do your clocks. Uh, hopefully we won't have too many more times of that. There's some talk about changing that up. But uh, this this weekend uh, is, is time to change your clocks. So be there and be a part of that time with us. Um, this evening, if you have a Bible, uh, get ready because we're going to look at uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter um, 1. And uh, we're going to look there in just a few moments. But uh, I'm going to pray for us first. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I love you. And I thank you for this day. I thank you for giving us this time together tonight. I thank you for who you are for us. And I thank you for how you blessed us in a mighty way. Lord, tonight, I just ask you to speak to our hearts. Remind us that it's you, Lord, that we're here for. Remind us that it's you. And you're the reason why we do everything we do. Thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. I love you and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you have your Bible... Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and we're going to look down about verse 8. <clears throat> and as you're getting your Bible, um, tonight I want you to think about those who receive death sentences. Uh, maybe you've had the, the opportunity to talk to somebody. Um, I remember when I was in college, I was in a sociology class, and they took us to the prison, and we got to talk to a, a man who, was, uh, who had received a death sentence. He had a different perspective on life. Um, it changed his view on what was going on and what he was going through. And uh, after um, his crimes, uh, his life was changed. But the consequence for those crimes still followed him. But uh, it was interesting to me to hear him share about his perspective on life and how it had changed because he knew his time of death was coming. Um, David Nasser wrote a book called A Call to Die. I encourage you to get it. It's a great book. Um, and it talks about how in this world we're, we're called from the time we're born to the time we die. It's a call to die. And um, I pray that um, we really understand that because when we understand the destinance that we've been given from the day we were born, uh, we don't think, like to think about that for little kids or even young adults, but from the day we were born, we were given a destinance. And I hope and pray that each one of us will just kind of think about that for a few minutes because when we look at our passage tonight, it's really... Uh, it's a reminder of the hope that we have. It's, it's not lost hope in all this. It's a reminder of the real hope we have. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 is where we're going to be. And it says, For we don't want you to be unaware, brothers, of our affliction that took place in Asia. We were completely overwhelmed beyond our strength, so that we even despaired of life. Indeed, we personally had a dissonance within ourselves, so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raised the dead, who has delivered us from such a terrible death, and we, he will deliver us. We have our, put our hope in him that he will deliver us again. While, you're jo while you join in helping us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gift that came through us through the prayers of many. Tonight I want you to think about that with me just for a few minutes, the death sentence that takes place. Paul seemed to make a, a personal plea to people so that they would understand what he was going through. It, 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 it almost 
appears like a, um, a, a time of death, sometimes that comes in a form of sickness. Sometimes it comes in loss. Sometimes it comes in hurt. And Paul, when he went through ex experience in Asia, he was, it was very painful for him because Stephen was accused of blasphemy. Talks about that encounter in Acts chapter 6, 9 through 15. I encourage you to take some time at some point and go look at that a little bit where Stephen was sharing the truth of Jesus, but he was blamed by people for wrongdoings. Um, it was beyond his personal strength. Um, in fact, both of them, Stephen and Paul, it was beyond their strength to be able to face the people they couldn't personally trust in their own ability. I don't know if you've ever been accused of things that maybe you didn't do. I've been there before. Um, anytime you speak the truth of Jesus Christ, people will accuse you of all kinds of things. And it's painful. It hurts. But we got to put our trust and hope in God. The death sentence that we've been given, every one of us, whether we realize it or not, is that uh, like what it says in Colossians 3, 3, for you died and your life is hidden in Christ. And when you're hidden in Christ, people can say whatever they want to say. They can speak however they want to speak. Do um, tonight take this example that Paul gives us and allow it to be a reminder of the destiny so that we know what we need to do. Paul gave us this example in this passage and he gives us a couple things I want us to consider. First of all, don't trust in yourself but trust in God. Look at verse 9. It says, Indeed, we personally had a death sentence with, uh, within ourselves so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raised the dead. Um, on our own, we can't, <clears throat> we can't take the pain or the hurt of a death sentence. Uh, even the gentleman in, in prison when I was in uh, college at UCF, you could tell he, the pain that he was going through was, was very painful because he was remorseful of the past but the consequences were still there can't take that away but we can't really even accomplish things on our own um, we've got to realize that our only trust our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness we can sing songs like that sometimes but we miss the hope that's there uh, I like this <clears throat> poem I heard it kind of goes along with where we're at tonight it says trust him when dark doubt assails these trust him when thy strength is small. Trust him when to simply trust him seems the hardest thing of all. Trust him, he is ever faithful. Trust him for his will is best. Trust him for the heart of Jesus is the only place of rest. See, if we put our trust in ourselves, it works. It may work for a little while, but it doesn't work long term. Not at all. Uh, trusting in ourselves takes us down a road or a path that won't, uh, the end result won't be what we think it's going to be. But when we trust in Jesus, even though the, the, the path looks a little scary or it looks a little dark, as David said, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, we, we need to remember that God is with us. God is with us. And we get scared uh, when we go through or hear that we've been given a death sentence. If you've ever heard the words, it's cancer or you have a short time to live, or your loved one uh, is not scheduled to be here a long time. My mom has outlived every time she's been told things, um, and I'm so thankful. Um, I believe it's 19 or 20 years that she's been given way more than what anybody would have thought. But I'm thankful because she's, she's a fighter, and we need to continue to fight to share the truth of Jesus Christ. Because when we put our trust in our, ourselves, then we're trying to figure it out our own way, and we can't do that. But Christ, Christ alone, gives us victory. Uh, the second thing it, that we need to remember is in verse 10. It says, He has delivered us from such a terrible death, and He will deliver us. We put our hope in Him that He will deliver us again. He has delivered us, He will deliver us, and He, he will do it again. Um, knowing that He delivers us, he delivered us from death to life. In Ephesians chapter 2, it talks about the grace that we receive from Christ. And it talks about the importance of his grace and the hope that we have in that grace. And when we think about how great and mighty that grace is, we have a better understanding of what we have. That he delivered us from death to life. Um, and he has delivered us. When you know that Christ has delivered you, it, it's one step. 
But when you know he'll, he will and he'll continue, your trust level goes skyrocket because you trust not just in the, in the easy days, but in, in every day. Um, Reverend Charles Pigott tells how, when he was on a holiday, he came to the top of one of the high hills in Devonshire. His attention was attracted to an ant. Now, this ant was carrying a long straw and it came across a crack in the rock. and um, He wanted to see what this little tiny creature was going to do. And so after attempting to take the burden across several different ways, this ant decides to take the, the straw and, and push it in front of the crack until it reached the other side. And when he got to the other side, he lifted up the straw and he kept going. <coughs> Excuse me. There is no burden that you and I carry faithfully uh, that someday God won't use as a bridge to carry us over. I look back at some of the toughest times in my life, some of the most difficult times. and um, I just know that God will carry us through. He'll, he'll carry us to the other side. He'll, he'll carry us when we don't think that we can do it at all. Um, and, and he he'll also take those times as a lesson for us to bridge to others, to help others see that there's hope and there's victory and you're not alone. Um, so those two very important trust and the idea of delivery. But then there's a third one here that I want us to see. It's in verse 11 and it says, while you join in helping us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gift that came through us through the prayers of many. There is power in prayer. I so long to be a part of, of praying for others and, and just being able to focus on how important that is. Focus on the help that comes through the power of prayer. I, I can't tell you how many times that I, I've, um, I've had a tough time or a difficult day and somebody came and just happened to tell me out of the blue, hey, I prayed for you yesterday. And I know that that's what helped get me to the other side. My mom uh, has had a number of times in life where we talked about ministry. I'm, I'm a first generation, I guess. My, my great-grandfather did some time in ministry, but I'm, I'm, I'm in ministry. Um, and a lot of my family do, uh, were part of working in greenhouses. Um, but my mom used to, I used to tell her that how tough Wednesdays happen to be or Sundays. And she'd say, well, you know, that's because you're going to talk about the Lord. And when you talk about the Lord, Satan's going to be upset at you. So she always used to remind me on Wednesdays would be tough days. Even when I was youth pastor, I get to talk and share with a bunch of my students. But those were tough days because um, Satan knew that I was going to have a chance to share hope with teenagers. And so he tried to scourge me first. Uh, and, and maybe he even does that to people today. I, I, I don't know. Um, but I believe that he tries to discourage pastors and their families and their ministries on Sunday and Wednesday, especially when you have a chance to encourage people and give give hope uh, through the power of Jesus Christ. Really, when we pray for others, it takes our focus off of ourselves, and it puts the focus off of us and puts it on someone else so that we can really pray and really see. And then when we see that prayer answered, sometimes that helps us to pray even more fervently, to really to really pray and really seek the face of God. So I encourage you in, in those three things. First of all, the trust. Second of all, the little delivery. Third, the idea of praying for others. Um, and when you think about that, think about that death sentence again. Um, some, some people who were in ministry, this is some of their last words. I remember uh, reading about these in seminary, but Martin Luther, his, supposedly his last words were, Our God is the God from whom uh, comes salvation. The war... God is the Lord by whom we escape death. And then that was it. Can you imagine? Um, John Knox said, Live in Christ, live in Christ, and the flesh need not fear death. John Calvin said, Thou Lord bruised me, but I am abundantly satisfied since it was from your hand. John Wesley said, Best of all is God is with us. Farewell, farewell. Charles Wesley uh, said, I shall be satisfied with thy likenessness. Satisfied. Satisfied. You think about that. I, I've been there a number of times when people are getting ready to stand before the Lord. I remember one lady in Florida, she looked at me and she was talking to me about um, seeing an angel in the room. And, and then she said, do you see it? And I said, no, ma'am, I don't see it. 
but if you tell me the angel's here, I, I believe you. And she said, well, what do I tell him? And I said, well, are you ready to go? And she said, well, I am ready. And I remember she said, um, I've talked to my family. I've talked to you. i talked to everybody I want to talk to. I said, well, then I, all I know to say is come get me then. And so she, she held her hands up like this and she said, Lord, come get me. She fell back in the bed. She, she looked at me. She said, preacher, he didn't come yet. I said, well, tell him again. So she told him a second time and then a third time. After the third time, she leaned back and that was it. She was with Jesus. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. Many times we put our hope in, in the things of this body. But maybe we, we can put our hope in the Lord and, and really see that a death sentence is not necessarily a bad thing when you have hope in Christ. See, the result is, is a thanks on our, our behalf, like it says there in verse 11. I remember praying for a pastor. I, I got this commentary right here. I, I have it on my shelf. Jerry Vines was the pastor of First Baptist Jacksonville. And um, he at the time was there with Homer Lindsay. They were both pa co-pastoring that big, huge, ginormous church. And Jerry um, came and talked to me in, uh, in, in our class, all, all of us, not just me personally. And I decided I wanted to get his First John, Second John, and Third John commentary. And after getting the commentary, I asked him to sign it because I I just was encouraged by his words um, and so I asked him to sign my book and remember he signed the book and he basically just signed his name you know Jerry Vines uh, Psalm 126 6 but then um, and this was in 1999 when I got this after he signed that for me he looked at me and said I want you to do something for me now and I'll never forget he said would you pray for me and here's a pastor of a church you know probably 10,000 members at the time baptizing a thousand people a, a year in this church at least record setting uh, I mean just great things and he asked me a mega church pastor asked me would you pray for me I didn't really understand the the whole purpose behind that at the time but I, I think it's important for us all to remember we need to be praying for each other I encourage I, I try to pray for everybody I can pray for on a regular basis I, I, I really think that there's real power in prayer and I encourage you to pray for me too um, there is power and strength in the prayers of, of the righteous ones that seek after the Lord in everything that we do. You know, if we're going to be the kind of people of God that we need to be, we need to be people that are seeking after God in every single thing. We need to be people who are seeking after um, everything that God has to offer us. Um, and so I, I just ask you today, if you if you feel like you've had a death sentence or you feel like you've missed out on everything or you feel like you just don't have what you really need um, seek after the Lord um, seek after what he has you know um, as I finish up this little illustration right here for, from Jerry Vines I want you to think about those words that he signed in my, my book it's Psalms 126 verse 6 it says the one goes along weeping carry, carrying the bag of seed he will surely come back with shouts of joy carrying his sheaves May we be people who seek after the Lord, whether you got a death sentence or not. Um, you really need to strive after the Lord. But when you receive your death sentence, knowing that your death sentence is because you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Remember what it says in Colossians 3, 3. For you died and your life is hidden in Christ. Take some time. Focus on that. Take some time. Spend in the word. And remember, his strength is perfect when ours is gone. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I love you, and I thank you for this day, and I thank you for giving us the privilege of gathering together on a Wednesday night. Lord, I thank you for those who tuned in tonight just to get a little encouragement, and I pray, Lord, that you help us to stay focused on you. Lord, as we have received a death sentence from the day we were born, Lord, help us to know that as we die in this world, there is an eternal death, that's hell, but there is eternal life, and that's heaven. And Lord, when we surrender our life to you, I just want to thank you for how you treat us, and how you take care of us. And in this life, Lord, you've given us life, and life more abundantly. Thank you for all you've done, and thank you for all you're going to do. I love you, and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining in tonight. I hope to see you real soon. And no matter what you're going through, whether you're struggling with life itself, just remember, charge on, because God is with us. God bless you.